for uh, proposing to do. Uh, sure. And then if they have questions, we'll have we'll have questions as we're moving through it. If they have. Sure. Perfect. Uh, again, my name is Chris Getchow. I'm with People Service. I'm in charge of business development. Uh, Mark, uh, just a little bit of background. I know we had talked to the city probably four or five years ago, I believe, uh, when uh, you were looking for a superintendent at that time. I know we had uh, kind of interviewed during uh, that process at that time. Um, I followed up with Glenn just touching base um, with him and uh, in just kind of discussions. I know there, there had been a lot of uh, changes, future updates, different things kind of going on in uh, multiple areas or whatever with the city and had just stated that uh, I know there had been since there had been some time, some different uh, council members, other things. Uh, he had, had asked, you know, to submit a proposal or you know if the city would consider just looking at this as an option um, at some point, um, you know, moving forward, at, you know, that, uh, in that regard. So I just kind of I give a little bit of background. Uh, People's Service does contract water wastewater operations. Uh, we're based out of Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, we've been in business just over 25 years. Um, currently, uh, we have a little over 150 clients in five states, being uh, Nebraska, Minnesota, uh, Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois. Um, uh, right now, of course, we, are, we as you can see and you know that we don't have any in Kansas at this time. Um, our goal is kind of looking at marketing and wanting to expand into Kansas. Uh, we've been having some set success uh, growing into Missouri. And, and uh, just being due to the location, we are wanting to kind of reach out and start to do some more marketing in the state of Kansas at the same time. Um, our, just kind of, you know, that a little bit about our corporate profile, um, is, which is which was a section one, you know, in the proposal. That, that it just kind of is a little bit of a, a company history of who we are, uh, what we can do. Um, just a little bit, of, again, a little bit of background about, uh, about us. Um, I know, you guys have uh, a lot of things. We've had a, long, I mean, a fairly long meeting already, I'm sure, uh, with the weather and so forth. And so uh, just kind of go into a couple of the other sections in here, and then I'm sure there'll be questions, and I'll uh, be uh, more than happy to help answer any of those. Uh, uh, section 3 is probably one of the, the, the section 3, 4, and 5 are probably the main pieces of the proposal um, that I would guess I'd kind of focus on. Uh, when we list the operational approach, uh, we had stated we could be responsible for the, the water and wastewater treatment facility, distribution collection, uh, lift stations, and storage. Is, is how we always list our agreements. Uh, our staffing plan, uh, we utilize the region manager. Um, Dwayne couldn't uh, make it today. We would, uh, between my house and where he was at or whatever, they shut the highways down, and so he wasn't <laughs> able to to make it, and so I was able to head south or whatever. I don't he wasn't able, he was he lives north of me, so he was kind of pinned in, and, and he had some other projects he wanted to address, and I told him it's just an initial introduction anyway, so that was okay. Um, but we, our region manager, uh, what we do is oversees and kind of uh, oversees our local staff. So of course we have local staff in, in all of our projects, and they report to the wing. Um, he kind of floats around between all of our projects in currently in Nebraska and, and then would be coming to be the individual that would come into this part of Kansas um, at this time. Uh, he's a licensed operator. Um, you know, he has many years of experience in the water wastewater field. So he's another resource for the staff that are here. You know, when he's here, uh, whether it's himself or anybody within our company, um, you know, we have uh, many projects that have surface water facilities, many that have uh, aero mod facility. Um, you know, to where if, uh, if say, we were here and we had uh, uh, kind of just learning the facility, if there's questions or something that we would identify and say, hey, we've, we've experienced this in this project and, and this employee's uh, done a really good job of, of working with that, we, would, we could bring them into town working with the local staff of trying to help educate and, and go over, hey, here's what we found successful at this project. It doesn't mean it's always going to work, but it's, it's another way of looking at it. Um, and those are, I guess, kind of what a, a lot of things that we do is we always look at how, ways to improve. Uh, not that there's, not that I'm saying that there's ways that are something wrong, you know, now or whatever. It's just we always are looking how can we improve, uh, even on amongst ourselves. We're gonna, of course, look at everything as running it as a business, being as we're a business. So our goal is how can we be the most efficient? How can we find ways uh, to streamline the operations as much as possible? 
uh, our intent, uh, of course, we require all of our employees to live within, with, live in or within the facility that they're responsible for. Um, so we put a half hour residency requirement that they have to live around uh, the city of Boyd. Uh, I made a statement, um, of course, one of the most important things, uh, you know, in this area is, uh, I guess, third paragraph where it said, you know, our intent would be if uh, the city would uh, consider or look at this as an option or whatever, our intent would be to want to sit down with um, every employee, answer questions that they have. Uh, see what their thoughts are about everything of course because I they have the experience they are here it's not like I have we have staff sitting somewhere on a shelf you know that can be just relocated immediately you know and so you want to look at and would be always of interest in working with the existing staff so I want to make sure I um, mention that uh, we when we talked about uh, our equipment uh, what we do is we provide vehicles for our employees um, so we ask for access to city-owned vehicles as far as special equipment. So it would be like the uh, jet machine or a backhoe or uh, certain what we would, would be deemed the specialty items. The city's already made the investment and owns that equipment. We would uh, just be listed to be able to help operate and maintain. Our insurance then covers us why we are operating. So if something were to happen while we are operating the city vehicle, um, then it would become our responsibility for that. We like to provide vehicles for our employees just due to, again, part of that liability just makes it cleaner that if somebody has to leave town or somebody's running to the neighboring town to get a part or whatever and they see a truck leaving town, they're not going, why is the city or Bloyd truck leaving town with people service employee in it? So it just makes it cleaner, easier to, to look at in that regard. If, again, moving forward, if this was an option, um, we would look at talking to the city about purchasing the current trucks if you have trucks that you own and don't have and you have some if they're not going to be shifted in a different department or would uh, in that regard we, we look at buying existing vehicles that are currently here uh, two of the other areas are the assessments um, you know I just listed some of the basic things uh, that you know of course we cross train all of our employees to where we try to have them work amongst different departments whether it be water waste water distribution collection we like to try to have everybody, you know, there's uh, staff that are always uh, best at the, whether it be the water treatment plants or the wastewater plants or somebody that's good with the backhoe or somebody that's good with the jet machine. There's always specific people that are better at those. But we also like to educate and get them to know other processes at the same time. It strengthens their background and, and so forth to where maybe they would want to move into the treatment plant at some time or you know from distribution so it kind of gives them the ability to uh, learn and educate in, in all departments at the same time um, we would evaluate the chemicals um, at the facilities both water and wastewater i know um, the water plant of course is one of the main uh, would be one of the main categories um, you know there's i know in the past there's been some uh, the uh, surface water facility, um, you know, in the past, I know that there's been violations over TTHM, so forth, surface water, um, it can happen. Um, it's just, of course, uh, I know I think you probably deal with algae blooms, whatever, something out of the, uh, out of the lake, a uh, very common occurrence. The goal is to try to help, or to try to look at, uh, find maybe some different chemicals to help with the process um, or ways to try to make some modifications at the treatment plant to help um, curtail that or whatever is you, you know you, you pretty you kind of know when some of those blooms are going to happening you know when seasons changing different things and so you're trying to help prepare for that uh, again you can't prepare for everything but you know the goal is to help try to um, accomplish that at the same time um, that also is is looking at what how are ways that we could identify uh, chemicals just inside the facility itself uh, to maybe there's some cha different changes you can change different oxidizers different things to try to and locations of where you, where they're at it um, to, so then sometimes you can be creating it yourself and having issues just internally and not even be aware uh, we have a safety program um, all of our staff or our OSHA trained everybody has to be a uh, being <coughs> private company uh, we have to um, run everybody through uh, OSHA training. Uh, 
kind of talking about contractual provisions, I'm just jumping through. I don't want to go, I'm just going to highlight some of that. I know you don't want to sit here and listen to me read word for word. Um, but the, you know, the contractual provisions, again, um, this date is just really just a draft, you know, it's just so that you can see how the, the proposal and how it's structured or whatever would be moving forward. Um, we, what we do ask is for a five-year term uh, when we do a presentation. Um, what that does is it allows us, we like to look at uh, when we do projects, uh, whether it be sewer cleaning, manual inspections, uh, valve turning, different things, we always try to look at 25%. And I'm trying to target, a 20, uh, kind of do a 25% window. to where sewer cleaning, we try to, whether it's cut the town and force and do, kind of do a rotation around uh, trouble spots on a more frequent basis, we try that at a minimum. So then it kind of puts in a plan and it's written and uh, in that regard. Um, what it's also, if it's a written plan, you can show documentation, you go through the whole process. Of course, you know, insurance likes to see that, so that if there ever is a backup or ever is claims, you have written documentation, because if it's not written down, it doesn't, ha it didn't happen. So, you know, our goal is to always try to continue to make sure that that's taken care of. And that's part of the reasoning. Um, it's also, again, for, uh, for us, um, you know, the employee wants to have some security at the same time, whether it be existing or new. You know, they, they don't want to think, well, geez, I can do this, and a year later, things change again, you know, and so it, it allows them to give some security at the same time. Uh, we utilize the consumer price index uh, as an inflationary tool. Um, you know, so then uh, lately, I think the CPI, I think the last one I saw was a 0.7%. Um, so, I, you know, of course, I know the, the Feds are trying to keep it at around 2% as a target, but it's been way under that. Um, if it are to, were to go negative, it does um, go by, you know, our contracts do get decreased. It's just a risk we take in regard with utilizing the consumer price index. Um, we have had some to where, just because of the ups and downs of that uh, index or whatever, we've had, had some clients that have asked for a ceiling or uh, you know where not to exceed or whatever and so um, that that's something that we have you know more more than happy to look at or do you know if something just because it does protect the city at the same time uh, moving on kind of the section four is the other one of the other main pieces is what what we deem as a scope of service uh, this actually becomes written into as part of an exhibit of the of a, of a draft agreement or an agreement um, this would list the specific tasks of what our, what we would be responsible for. So this is what one thing that Dwayne, as a region manager, uh, you know, works with would work with our staff and say, "Hey, here's what we're required to do. Here's what has to get done. This is what we have under contract to take care of." More, more than likely, it's written in a way that probably is not much different than day to day now or whatever but it's actually written down a paper of here's our here's what we are going to be doing so that's one of the that's probably one of the main changes or whatever that would be there so again we talk about personnel and training so any personnel training CEUs schooling anything to do uh, benefits any of that becomes um, our responsibility um, in that regard uh, so we have, and then the next one talks about communication vehicle and supplies. Again, that would be our responsibility. The testing, both water, wastewater, um, become our responsibility. Uh, again, it just since we're going to be doing all the testing and sending it off, it just uh, becomes part of it and, and it works in that regard. Uh, a liaison, uh, we become, you know, work as a liaison with the city, whether it be with the Department of Health, EPA, who would ever be involved in, with the water, wastewater, uh, working with the engineer. Different things on projects. I know they've. Uh, I think they sound like they've done some extensive work on trying to identify uh, some of the sources that have caused some of the issues that you've had. Um, and I know you had. Um, I think you've had several options on the table or whatever, looking at on the water side as far as upgrades to your facility. So you know, we would uh, be involved or whatever, or you know, could help out with as far as reviewing. Um, trying to help make sure on the city side that we're reviewing those. We're not by any means we don't engineer. We just like to see how is there ways we can help. Again, it goes back to our experience at this at a certain facilities that we would you know work with the engineers say hey we've had really good luck with doing this at this location you know and and just recommend it. Um, again, you know the engineer has to know will work or want to work, but it's just something that we do to, to work with them in that regard. 
again, talking through some of these, uh, you know, I'm, I won't read through all of them um, in here, but, you know, it identifies the different things that would be responsible for it. Uh, one of the things that I know would probably, are probably different right now would be the maintenance program. Uh, we utilize computerized maintenance program. Um, so what we do is every piece of equipment, uh, when we start a project um, that requires maintenance, we go back to the O&M manual and find uh, how frequently does the oil need to be changed, how frequently do the filters, different things uh, need to be identified and changed. Uh, as far as, like I said, the oil, grease, different things. That All of that is put into that computerized program and it's, and it's on the server in Omaha. Um, and the reason we do that is uh, Dwayne's assistant generates the work order from there and emails the operators in the field and says, here's the work orders that are required to be done. Once they go through the work orders and complete them, they fill them out, uh, put them back on the scanner, send them back to her to show what's been done and, and, and log all of that. Again, it's just a way to where, you know, everybody, as you're sitting here in town, you know, you start on a project and somebody calls and you got to go do a shot off or you have to go, you have a water main break, you have different fires that you're putting out, things can change. And so you take the maintenance as far as the logging and whatever, uh, so they don't have a worry. We schedule it for them and they know when it has to be done. And so then it just makes it an easier process or whatever, where they're not trying to remember, boy, when was the last time that I did that? And, uh, you know, it's maybe written down in a book. This automatically generates it so that it's there and, and we, you stay on track with everything. Um, kind of in relation to that, uh, we have uh, at the facilities, we utilize a thin client. Um, what that does, again, is it allows the operators to have access. Every All the work that they do um, ends up back into the Omaha server just so that it's electronically backed up. Uh, it's not on a local PC so that when you have an issue and the PC crashes and it's on your hard drive, you can't get to it. So we try to generate, whether it be reports, everything else, everything's on the server backed up somewhere so that it's saved off-site somewhere at the same time because it goes from us to somewhere else um, <coughs> for free um, support. Again, I don't know if I, I don't really necessarily need to read through all of these. You know, we talk about the cleaning, I've talked about this, or, you know, water being breaks, that, you know, talks about everything throughout here. Um, I, one thing that I'll kind of mention is, is we have kind of what we call value-added services. Uh, you know, we can assist in, you know, if we need to look at, uh, with uh, assistant in working with rates, um, kind of assessments of, uh, as far as uh, planning for the future with the facility. Uh, some I and I, uh, you know, we have some smoke testing equipment uh, that we utilize to target and come in. Um, all this is done by, uh, there's a gentleman in our Omaha office, that's kind of what he does, is he, he's our safety person. He does, helps with um, startups, he does uh, maintenance, he kind of focuses on that and works with the staff or whatever to know what has to get done and accomplished at the same time. Um, he's all, just kind of an extra body that, that comes in and, and helps as a specialist in some of those categories. Uh, the next section, five, is the proposed pricing. Uh, you know, it lists everything in here, operating personnel, supplies, materials, communication, maintenance, repair, insurance, admin overhead. Uh, that maintenance and repair category, the way that works is, is uh, we have, um, there's $35,000 of what we deem as a maintenance fund. <clears throat> what we do, that is part of the overall uh, uh, price that's included. Um, and what that does is it allows us to go when we need to get the oil and the grease and other stuff. It allows us to purchase those without coming in and getting approval from City Hall or different things like that. Um, every month then you're getting an allocation. Uh, we submit a monthly written report of everything. Um, we require the operator to write a monthly written report as far as the flows, loadings, projects, you know, water complaints, whatever. Everything is logged so every month. Uh, it's submitted to you at your meetings so that you know what's been going on. And, and as a piece to that, this maintenance report, or the maintenance fund, uh, the financials are with that as far as what's spent and so forth at the same time. So what sort of accountability is it if there's an ongoing issue? Like, like in years past, there's been red water coming in people's drains and stuff like that, and people would complain in city council, and, and ultimately it led to us changing up a bunch of pipes around town. Mm -hmm. What, other than a five-year renewal, of your services, mm -hmm. what what is the accountability that makes you guys go out and address those 
consumer complaints? Well, uh, well, you're right. Part of it is, is if we're not providing a good service, we're not going to be here. Right. Um, but our goal, of course, is, uh, I mean, we can't guarantee, you know, that there's never going to be red water. There's never needed because, you know, there's certain things that are out of your control. If, if there was something that uh, we were negligent at the waste, or at the water plant and you know caused issues in town or whatever, you know, of course that's that's going to be our responsibility, and we got to uh, figure that out. Our goal, of course, is going to be, you know, provide the cleanest, best water possible. Um, I, and I really think that uh, we know that we have to do that day in and day out, or we're not going to be. You know, we probably could end up becoming a breach of our agreement of not being able to uh, do what we're saying that we would do. Uh, so I guess that would try to be in a roundabout way an answer. I, I don't think there's really, on the legal side, that's probably how it would work, I guess. Um, but I know, I guess I would just have to say my word that I, I know that it's going to be addressed and, and, and taken care of. You know, I mean, I can't, that's not uh, the best answer I know, but I mean, I'm just going to say that I know that that's what our goal is, is to provide that service and take care of it. It's not going to be ignored. That's not what why we would be here. When I get called and we're doing bids and we're submitting proposals, a lot of times it's because there's continues to be issues and the issues aren't getting addressed or they're you know they're having issues, they hire us because they want those issues and headaches to go away. And that's that's what we do is to make those headaches and issues go away. So in, in big picture, mm -hmm. what are we giving up and what are we getting? I think as far as giving up you you're not I don't feel you're giving up anything other than you're not having um, your hat you the employees they would be employees they wouldn't be city employees so the, they, the one thing you'd be giving up is they would not be city employees right. what you're getting in return I would say is that you're going to be getting not just the employees that are here locally you're going to be getting the whole company because we look at it as a team approach so that whatever resources and that we need we're going to utilize that to make sure it's taken care of. If we have staff here and there's projects, uh, you, all of a sudden you see people coming in from out of town or whatever to help with some of these, you don't see any additional billing. It's it's just what we do to provide service to get the project done. So the bill would still be going out as it currently does? Mm -hmm. It's just you you still, submitting it to our staff and we'd be sending it out with our bill. You you own you would still own the facility, you still set the rates, you still do everything. We're really taking just that personnel piece away uh, from the city. And I feel that we're giving you more control than probably you have now. You know, I know a lot of communities, uh, they tell me or you know, uh, when I'm doing a presentation, they're going, Wow, we're losing some control. Um, I think if you talked to several communities um you know if you talk to them i think they feel like they have more control now with us than they would mainly beings we have an agreement in place and this is what has to get done if it's not getting done i mean it's written there to where they know they they have that um you know to take care of plus we also know that uh, they also know that it we're going to make sure that it has to get done or again we're not going to be here for the long term you know we have projects that we've been at since we started because we won't be yeah. here for the long term. If at the end of the first contract period, mm -hmm. the, you decide to move out or we decide that we don't want your services anymore, mm -hmm. then we're at a point where we don't have operators that know anything. If we start from zero with nobody to train them. No. If, if uh, we were here saying, you know, uh, we signed an agreement the employees that are here, every one of them comes with us. Say, for instance, in five years, say uh, a couple guys left or whatever in that time frame, or retired, whatever in that time frame. At the end of that five years, only those two, since they were not current city employees, would be not would not have the ability to go back to work for the city. That's the way our contracts are written. It's just a non what we call a non compete clause. It's just so that they, you know, we don't want our employees coming back into it closely in the, you know the agreement and trying to say, hey, you know, get rid of them and just hire us, you know, to come to work here. But there's certain things that if you know, say, you know, the council changes, the council like, yeah, you know, that's not what you know. Hey, that council voted up. We want change. 
Well, sometimes that happens. Well, if they were existing employees, we feel, you know, they have the ability to go back. Any new employees, you know, we've paid for training, we've played that do a lot of different things to educate them. It's, you know, it just allows, gives us some protection in that regard too. I can't say that we don't allow them to go back to the municipality. You know, if they, if, if it's not, I guess, at their cause, you know, that they didn't cause some of that or whatever, you know, I mean, we've, we, we understand there's just sometimes it just doesn't work, so. How, uh, Chris, how many facilities do you guys manage that are surface water? Mm. You have a few of them. Yeah, we have, uh, well, there's Mer uh, one, two, I know I can think of like five right now, I believe, right? Uh, if I'm thinking of counting, right? Four or five right in there. So you're already dealing with same, some of the same issues that we are mm -hmm. assuming with some of these other, because I think surface water as a bill is a beast of its own. Surface water is definitely, you know, you have to have, um, it, it takes, you know, me personally, when I first started out of college and, and I started with a company, I worked, I, I ran a groundwater facility. I thought, you know, the headaches, some of the headaches that I had with that, dealing with telemetry and different things or whatever, you know, some of some of those things, those are minor or whatever. After I've, you know, got into understanding what's what happens in the surface water side, of it. you have to know what you know what you're doing, and it takes you know the right person to, to understand that. Um, you know, I feel that we have uh, one particular individual, one of Dwayne's counterparts, um, would be in working with Dwayne because that's kind of his strength and background is uh, surface water and chemicals. And so that's really his strength or whatever. And so he would be kind of partnering up with Dwayne um, as a manager to uh, identify stuff like that. And and he's one, you know, I mean, I have uh, talked to him about some of the stuff or whatever, you know, and he's, uh, I have, you know, pretty good list or whatever, some things that, you know, we feel that would make, could make some positive changes or whatever to the facility, you know, just that are just chemically driven. Chris, if we were to contact some of these communities. Yeah. You've got listed there. Yep. What What would they tell us as far as why they went with you folks mm -hmm. and what the advantages were? Uh, you know, I guess you know I put a variety of, of contracts here or whatever, and there's one I was just uh, I just realized I, I didn't put on here. It's a surface water plant. It's my uh, apologize, but they are one of the newer ones, and uh, Bethany, Missouri, would be one that um, I could email uh, to, uh, back or whatever to some of their contact info. Uh, they, are one, they were just signed like last year. Um, some of, just like in, in that case, they had um, existing staff there. They were having some issues. They were trying to find, uh, they were maybe gonna have somebody that's gonna be retiring. You know, they just had a different venue, changes that they were trying to look at, ways that they think they could try to, is there ways they could be more efficient potentially. Uh, we submitted a proposal. We hired the existing staff there. Um, there's one that uh, decided to take a city job that was open um, because he wanted to continue on with the city, so he moved to the street department. Uh, some of these other ones, you know, we've been at since, you know, in the 90s. Um, you know, back then it was just getting rid of the headache. You know, they didn't want to have to deal with water and sewer anymore, or they've had issues, um, and they didn't want to have to worry about finding staff, worry about, uh, making sure that things were taken care of properly because we were just kind of that extension of the city at that time and, and we provided some of those resources that you know maybe they felt they, they wanted to have at that time and this i gave you kind of a variety in different states too, right. just because i wanted to uh some of them have you know i know you have an aeromod plant some are surface water uh you know i know you deal with um you sell water rural water so you know we have rural water that we can operate you know in there also just kind of give you a different variety of people to contact. If uh, when Matt was talking about brown water, we've just replaced what a third of our mains, and that was a lot of problem. Now, if we have to replace pipelines, is are we going to have to do that or just furnish the equipment? I now, I the way I wrote it is that I, I didn't write that we would be replacing mains in town. Well, we've but, contracted all that. Yeah. Out. Probably would again, but I mean, if somebody had a, a line bust or leak or something, would that mm -hmm. be your responsibility? That'd be our responsibility, yes. Okay. As yeah. far as it replacing, you know, three blocks or doing whatever, I didn't I didn't assume that or whatever. Is it, 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 
I guess in, in the past or whatever, and us kind of looking at it, it just seems more efficient when um, to utilizing outside contractors. That's kind of their specialty. You don't want to inconvenience people for too long. So somebody like that, they come in and get it done a lot faster than what you can yourself a lot of times. So just to be clear, you're doing the work, we're doing the paying for the pipe. Correct. On mains and so, yeah, the water main breaks, just, yeah. On oh, the repair. Repairs, yep. Yep, so that's part of that maintenance fund. So if there's repair clamps, you know, just some, uh, you have to put dresser couplings and a chunk of pipe in, whatever, you know, that can be part of that maintenance fund that you're, that, that's in there that we're buying, or that there's, an in, you know, off of the inventory or whatever that would be. That's there. that 25,000. Mm -hmm. the, the labor is on you. Yes. The materials is on the city. Correct. And you'd give us 24-hour service for emergencies. Yeah. Like 